<laughs> In The Sopranos, mob boss Tony Soprano seeks to avoid landing himself a jail sentence, all while making as much money as he can and controlling both his family and the family. Tony's nephew Christopher Moltisante is dear to Tony. Chrissy is his protege, the man who Tony grooms to become his successor after his reign as boss ends. As such, Chrissy often receives special privileges at the expense of other mobsters, such as when Patsy is passed over for promotion, which is instead given to Chris. In spite of the nepotism, Chris proves to be a failure for Tony due to his constant fuck-ups, the most dangerous of which is his drug and alcohol addictions. With his substance abuse, Tony lives in constant fear of Chris flipping to the feds in order to avoid a lengthy jail sentence, and in the process, giving him up. As such, in season 6, Tony utilises an opportunity after a car crash leaves Christopher immobilised to block his airways, killing Christopher in what is surely one of Tony's darkest and most sickening moments. Now, the issue as to why Tony killed Christopher and the psychology and analysis behind this is something I've already discussed in a video called Why Did Tony Kill Christopher? It might be worth checking out that video before you continue with this one as I discuss in great detail Tony's line of reasoning for killing Chris and his mindset behind the decision and for the sake of the people who have already watched that video I want to avoid going over the same points here. This video is basically an extension of that one but of course that video is already very long. So here I want to discuss a further possibility with regards to Christopher's death, a Sopranos theory which is a lot more obscure than many I've discussed on the channel but one that is worth talking about and that is, did Christopher become a rat and was he wearing a wire when he was with Tony in the car? Now I know some of you guys are thinking, fucking slander ask me, where on earth are you getting this from? Nowhere is it ever suggested that Christopher became a rat and yes, it's true that the series never really points to the fact that Chris might have been wearing a wire, but who knows? Keep watching the video and you might come to find that there might actually be a case here. And before you do, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button so you don't miss out on future videos. You can also support the channel by becoming a patron or channel member. Now of course, the idea of Chris becoming an informant is always flirted with in the show. He's actively being sought after by the FBI, who know that he is their door to Tony. His own girlfriend was talking to the feds, which no matter how innocent Chris was in all of it, would no doubt make Tony constantly weary of him. In fact, the first thing he does when Chris tells him the news about Adriana is check to see if Chris is wearing a wire. There's a scene where Paulie has Chris undressed to check him for a wire, which was mainly done to humiliate him of course, but what I'm getting at here is the idea is constantly planted by the show that this guy could end up flipping. The closest he actually came of course was after Adriana came clean to him, and he leaves and then looks out at a family, your average normal American family, and knows that he could never live that kind of life, away from the allures of the mob and far away in some distant corner of the world in the witness protection program. Maybe he genuinely thought about doing it, or maybe he was just trying to give Adriana a false sense of security, but I feel this is the closest he came to actually flipping. And you might be thinking, well, if he was gonna flip, that's where he would have done it, so why would he waste an opportunity to live life out with Adriana and not flip when he had the chance, and all of a sudden decide to do it in season 6? Well, by this point, the relationship between Tony and Chris is no longer what it once was, there is resentment from Chris over Adriana. There is resentment from Tony over Chris's disappointment as his number two. Chris becomes frustrated as his battle to stay sober becomes a running gag in the mob, and other mobsters such as Tony B and Bobby Bacala become closer to Tony at the expense of him. There is an element of Chris that thinks, this is the guy I got Adriana killed for, the innocent beautiful love of my life, and this is the way he treats me, the way he marginalises me, constantly berates me and passes me over, and let's not forget the whole issue of Chris potentially flipping because he gets busted on drugs charges, like pussy, is always ever present, whether Adriana is alive or not. Christopher even entertains the idea of turning rat at one point in the episode Walk Like a Man, where he drunkenly tells JT Dolan, his friend who was writing Law and Order, the SUV, you have any idea if I wanted what I could do to these pricks? One phone call and it's over. This is the episode before Christopher dies, where he's upset and infuriated at Paulie's joke about his daughter working at the Bing. Who's to say Chris didn't go ahead and make that phone call? The motivation is clearly there. 
He also talks about how Gervano was living large in Arizona because of the program, saying that the government has money to burn. Let's not forget, unlike before, Christopher now has a wife and kid to protect. So, what's the evidence behind this theory? Well, it pretty much starts and ends with the cleaver cap that Christopher wears. In both his first scene and his last scene, Christopher is wearing a ball cap, and as we know, Jack Masserone had flipped in season 5 and he was wearing a wire in his cap provided by the FBI. He would never take his cap off, even at Tony's insistence, and though Tony eventually works out that he's a rat, he never finds out that the wire was in Masserone's cap. The best time for Chris to have flipped was after Adriana came clean to him, but instead he sold her out. He suggested on numerous occasions since then that he regretted this decision, not least because Adriana was truly the only other person he had in the world. She's dead, he is alienated from his crew, he murders Dolan, what else does he have left? Isn't it a bit weird how the murder of a Hollywood screenwriter with mob connections is killed with Christopher's fingerprints all over his apartment? and yet no one ever brings this character up again, almost like the murder was hushed up. Hushed up by who? The FBI perhaps, who used this as leverage to nab Christopher. Tony would have been furious with the killing of JT, because it would have brought the Sopranos unnecessary heat, and yet he never brings it up, suggesting that he doesn't even know about it, even though he was so close to FBI agent Harris. Now Christopher acts very weird in the episode he dies in, both at the meeting with Phil Leotardo and the subsequent car ride, and it's pretty much chalked up to drugs. But Christopher hardly ever wears a hat. Why is he all of a sudden wearing one now? And at that, a cleaver hat to a mob meeting. It's a wonder Uncle Philly didn't slap it off his head and remind everyone that he did 20 fucking years. At the meeting, when Tony says, you've got the scam, Phil, we get a close-up of Chris looking away into the distance, as if he knows the feds have just heard something incriminating, and a few seconds later, he says, there's closed monitoring at every fucking landfill, as if confirming to the feds the scope of the scam. And Chris's erratic behaviour and tics could be in fact due to his nervousness because he's wearing a wire. Or maybe it is the drugs, but the entire reason why Christopher relapsed is because he got caught out by the feds and is bricking it that he's wearing a wire. Of course, this theory branches out into two directions, Chris willingly going to the FBI, or getting caught by them, or I guess a combination of both. Maybe that's why he turns the volume up so high when he's in the car, perhaps he was getting cold feet about giving Tony up, or maybe he was forced to become a rat by the FBI and was using Big Pussy's disinformation tactics so the feds wouldn't be able to hear Tony on the wire. Let's not forget, the soundtrack the duo listened to is from The Departed, a film full of informants, one who is like a son to the main crime boss who ends up being a rat. He also talks about stopping and smelling the roses, each day a gift, that kind of stuff, which could be the last few words a son says before he sends his father to jail for the rest of his life? Who knows? And maybe that's why he's so concerned with not being caught out with a drugs test. Since when would Chris care if he had a license or not, with the amount of illegal things he does? But if part of his deal with the feds was that he wasn't allowed to get high anymore, all of a sudden he has a real problem. Also, this might come off as laughable, but since we're here discussing this, when Christopher crashes the car, the car literally flips. Yeah, I know, but it's worth mentioning, and I don't have much else to go on. On a side note, it's amusing to note that in Goodfellas, after Joe Pesci shoots and kills Michael Imperioli's character, Spider, Imperioli who of course plays Christopher, he says his whole family were rats and he would have grown up to become a rat. And The Sopranos actually acknowledges Goodfellas and the spider situation with Christopher shooting a character in the foot in season 1 and saying it happens, when of course his character was shot in the foot in Goodfellas. Interestingly, in the final episode of the show, when the guys are talking about the cat that keeps staring at the photo of Chris on the wall, Tony makes a comment about there possibly being a rat that died in the wall. Another clue from the show that Chris may have actually been a rat. So, those are pretty much my evidences for this theory. Personally, I like this theory in a kind of what might have been kind of way, and it's ominous to know that Tony unknowingly spared himself life in jail by killing Chris, but I don't really buy the theory. The show doesn't put enough into it for it to be a legitimate one, I don't think, like with, you know, whether Ralph really did kill the horse and other stuff fans of the show talk about which definitely have been put in the show intentionally. Plus, there are a few holes in it. 
In an earlier season, the FBI agent who hangs around with Pussy says the feds would never look the other way on a murder charge, which they surely would have to do if Chris becomes a rat. And also, wouldn't the hat be among the possessions at the hospital, where the wire could easily be found? Although I guess no one actively looks for a wire in a cap, and it could have easily been thrown away. Chris wearing a cap could simply be a callback to the first season where he was wearing a cap and he drives Tony around. He might have also been wearing one because he was high and wanted to hide his eyes. And him being high might explain why he was being so soft on Phil. Nobody wants to go to the mattresses high on heroin. Or maybe because he's a rat and rats are not supposed to encourage violence. And that's why he is so uncharacteristically soft on Phil who he absolutely hates. Or the cap might simply symbolise that Christopher has no arc that they're generally worn by children, highlighting his immaturity. And though he is now a made man, the point of the cap being worn in his first scene and last scene is to show that he never developed or grew as the series progressed. So what do you think about this theory? Do you think it holds any weight? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.